Hello and uh, Aloha Pa, the Baha'i greeting to all the people on the planet. My name is Abbas Tamori. Time is 11.09. Today is 9th of the September 2011. I will be talking tonight about and alternative sexualities, which would deal with uh, homosexualities, prostitution, and some other uh, topics. Starting with homosexuality, as uh, science of today tells us, it's all about the hormones. Testosterone is the male hormone that makes a man because most of his uh, sexual hormones is testosterone, therefore is a male. And a female would have a lot more estrogen in contrast. Uh, there is no male in the world that just has testosterone and does not have estrogen, which is the female hormones. And the same thing is with the women or the female. Females would always have some testosterone. Basically, this is the basis for these homosexualities today. Today, uh, you've heard that by uh, through the gene therapy, I think uh, hormone therapy, uh, they inject people with uh, more testosterone or more estrogen and they change the appearance of a male or a female. Not totally, but to a certain extent. A man who is 80%, uh, let's say, has testosterone, 20% has female hormone in him. And same thing as women, they have some testosterone, but you know, mostly estrogen. But if in between, a man wants to uh, use 100% of his sexual power, Jesus, that would be a maniac in my opinion. But if he wants to be 100% active, then if he uses all his testosterone power to be sexual, some of the big great sheiks in Saudi Arabia and other countries probably they do that. They have a lot of women. They have enough sex with the women. So they might kick in that uh, testosterone, the estrogen part of themselves. It's kind of like a uh, <laughs> uh, regime in the West that um, democracy says, okay, 80% rules, so you're a man, but there's a 20% women in you, so that has to have a right too. So, if you like to get too deep inside it, into the matter, any man probably could have uh, uh, a part of, you know, a uh, um, female in him that wants to be um, homosexual or a woman. But these are recessive uh, characteristics in us. For example, if a blue-eyed man marries a brown-eyed woman, the children, uh, if they come up, all the children, they will have uh, blue, uh, they will have uh, brown eyes. But these browns are, the brown color of the eyes are recessive, which means there's blue hidden in them. So if two of them they marry with a hybrid, they might have blue-eyed children. In this case, it's something like this, that it's recessive in us as a male or a female. If we want to activate it, probably we do. But uh, I'm gonna have to go a little bit more into this to see what's happening. I guess if you'd like to discuss this issue a little bit uh, in a more sensible way, you could say that democracy in the West is synonymous to freedom which in my opinion that's not the case. Democracy of the West has not given man freedom, but he has given him system dictatorship. Dictatorship of the system. System dictates everyone, including the very uh, powerful man, the president and the prime minister in the West. And it has really screwed up 
the people in the West because democracy when it comes in the house it should have stopped because between man and woman democracy cannot work there are only two people they cannot vote for things so what do you do between the two people a spirituality has to kick in you know as a third uh, virtual being which is you know all this has been the religion of God but it's not the case in the world so uh, this continuous struggle of the right between the male and female when it comes inside the house it causes a lot of problem the West laws trying to protect the weaker which is the women classically has gone too far has created a situation that man uh, has very much less power and is uh, inherently guilty whenever a conflict happens between a male and female husband and wife in this case if there's a fight or anything it's the woman is the right man usually is known to be aggressive which should not be the case at all every case has to be studied individually and um, closely to find all the cases of it's not the way it is here right now this uh, situation has really uh, uh, frustrated the many men that I know that they just either given up on the sex or they have uh, used an alternative of alcohol and drug substance and abuse because when they want to go with a woman they're always afraid even they take the woman in their house anything she could charge she could have sex and later on say oh I didn't want to so this is what I've been told by many men and they're afraid of it so that could put a damper on the 80% of the testosterone of the man because he can't do anything about it. It's just too much red tape involved. So he tries to discover that 20% probably of estrogen and that's why they start to uh, incline themselves toward the homosexuality, you see. Uh, otherwise it does not have a real root in many many cases of course there are several cases many cases in which there's a hardware problem like a plumbing problem really truly these people are not male and female by definition their sexuality is a bit dif different story about them but the way it has been exaggerated in the West is all because of this frustration of man towards uh, the women in order to get them attracted and whatnot the women also that have become a stubborn and uh, uh, in many cases cruel uh, they've learned this and they like it because now the men are afraid and that has turned them into uh, a very uh, rough characters that are uh, mostly of uh, male characters it's kind of uh, uh, the the software is uh, female as a male software is a male software that is installed on a female software the woman bodily is a woman but it should be a man sort of this has been you know forecasted by Baha'u'llah he says that <coughs> in the Kitab Agdas <coughs> the whole uh, system in the world the whole equilibrium will be shaken because of not accepting his cause because of not accepting the scientifically right path the way that we could become normalized we are not accepting that then the whole thing is shaken they said the whole equilibrium is gone so much so that uh, it is like an earthquake it's cracked the houses cracked gone right through the character of the men and the women and they don't know if they're a man or a woman sometimes so the world at the time at this time is kind of sick and uh, it's lost its equilibrium like it has vertigo it just you know goes this way that way you know tumbles we don't know uh, this balance is basically gone because they have not accepted Baha'i faith so up and until such time that uh, Baha'i faith engulfs the world Baha'i government comes in effect oh and people get uh, 
uh, trained really, uh, they grow up within a Baha'i community from the scratch. And this uh, kind of a disease and sickness will go on. So, uh, um, the today the homosexuality in general, not I'm specifically saying that, but in general, is really uh, is an abnormality or it's a reaction towards what people don't like. And we should not, as a Baha'i, uh, to stress on that too much. Because nobody is perfect. To me, smoking, drinking, or anything that harms your body is abnormal just as well. How about somebody who likes to live the life and goes and hurts himself? If he does, he has a problem. And that's what is smoking and drinking and lots of other things do to us. Even bad, bad food and bad eating. So in between, uh, then is the situation that now we like to go, some of us anyways, to distinguish and say no, to sleep around with thousands of women, it's okay. But being homosexual is really perverted. No, they're both perversions. Okay? You like to choose this perversion, the other guy likes to do the other perversions. To me, to be on cocaine and uh, drug abuse and a lot of other things, violence, uh, this is just as bad. It's all perversions. It's all abnormality. It's all lack of balance, lack of equilibrium. So in between, they're asking me to, you know, be the judge. Which bad is better? Bads or bad? Or wrongs or wrong? It's like two snakes are eating each other. Which snake is better? They're both bad. You see? Bush attacks Saddam. Is Bush better than Saddam or Saddam is better than Bush? They're both doing mistakes. You see? I can't choose between them. So, homosexuality is abnormality. So is uh, drinking. So is a lot of other things that we do. I'm not going to choose between which one is better than the other one. But I want to say this though. We have to let go of this uh, are very superficial matters such as homosexuality because a homosexual can have all the attributes, the spiritual attributes uh, that Baha'u'llah wants him such as kindness, such as bravery, even teaching the faith of God. So, somebody could teach faith of God and is a smoking. The other guy who's learning is better to know that this guy knows the Baha'i faith but he can act upon everything else because we don't have a boss or an individual leader. We just inform each other what we know. None of us are a spiritual leader for anybody else. So, of course as a Baha'i we should not do these things, but at the same time we have to understand Baha'u'llah says do not judge. It's so important to Baha'i faith. And the Kitab Iran says at the time of death, the hour of death, like a few seconds, a very uh, a staunch believer might go to hell and a very very bad infidel might go to heaven in that few seconds if that's the case how can we really uh, judge anybody he says no one knows his own end we can't even judge ourselves so we better stop judging and look at the reality in my opinion uh, a homosexual has be has to be thought behind it and he can get engaged in teaching and nobody's business to talk to him about anything if anything has to be respected more and taken care of more and be more cared for. So, what do we do? If we see a man who lost his leg or is blind, we beat him up? No. You know, we show more understanding towards them. Those are the situations that could have happened for us. So, otherwise we can't be a Baha'i. I'm telling you that right now. The tolerance, it's very scientific. We have to understand it. But I can tell you something else though, the person who is arrogant, the person who is jealous, the person who is cruel, these three things, 
cruelty, jealousy, and arrogance will not take you into the Baha'i faith. Baha'u'llah says, if you're jealous, you will not come into my kingdom. It says, for cruel men, the best is to go to sleep all the time. Because when he wakes up, he wants to be cruel to other people. So is arrogance, you see. Arrogance has taken so many people into war, into killing. It's the mother of all evil. Arrogance, jealousy, and cruelty. If you see a Baha'i has demonstrating these things, stay away from him. Stay away from this type of people. They are seriously sick. God knows um, how to deal with them himself, but they are nothing like homosexuals, okay? So, uh, therefore, uh, we have to understand accepting the Baha'i faith means getting an admission. The person who signs, I'm a Baha'i, signs a card and signs this international, he's not graduated. There's two processes. First, you sign up the card or declare that you're a Baha'i, so you're taking an admission. Graduation? Did you pass all this curriculum? Dream on. Because it's close to impossible. I don't know who can claim that. So, while all we get admitted at a Baha'i Fed and we're calling ourselves Baha'i, all of us should know that we're not graduated from the teaching and the writing of Baha'u'llah as if that we don't need it anymore. So it's good for others or something like that. We have to keep that in mind in that way. The second topic uh, I'm going to talk is about the prostitutions. To me, mostly the prostitution in the East is because of poverty. In the West is mostly because of addictions. People are addicted, no money, they have to get their addiction responded. That's why they get into these things, generally speaking. But there are real prostitutes that are you can brand them. They are in the world of the arts, in uh, Hollywood, in movies, cinema, and in television. They have penetrated it, and they are doing a very, very good job of propagating it into the whole world. They have made people oversexed, sexaholic. It's all because of them. Something that's not big at all has become so big. The need towards the sexuality, it is so important that makes a person cannot even sleep. But all of it is like in a small sliver in the body. Small sliver goes into your skin, so minute. You can't sleep, you can't take shower, you can't even eat. But actually, it's such a simple thing. If you get it out, it's done. I see so many people uh, have this achievement deficit disorder. Every time I see a big, huge, expensive car, I know the man is suffering from uh, lack of sexualities. Because that's how it demonstrates. The normal guys are putting their head down, they have their sex. Somehow you have to find it, and quite honestly, in the West, it's become so difficult that uh, you kind of have to be like Michelangelo learn how to custom make them. Women are very difficult, maybe men too, but mostly women, but this is my notice. That you gotta get the chisel and take a lot of debris that has been showered like meteorites from Hollywood, from TV, from all the things on the poor women. To get them cleaned up, you gotta be a seriously a technician in a Baha'i faith. I've done it, I know what it takes. But you gotta make them. Then you can see underneath is a very beautiful uh, being, you know. So, uh, in my opinion, let me be quite blunt about this. Jesus Christ says, if you look bad at a woman, it's equal to you have that um, I committed adultery. Baha'u'llah doesn't do, doesn't say that that much. But if somebody intentionally wants to dress and adore herself or himself in such a way that 
it's all inviting, sexually inviting, because he wants to get attention of the other people. He is entering into the world of prostitutions. It's the biggest sin in the world to get a 15 years old and 18 years old, a man who has no uh, wife, no woman, no husband, mostly it's the case with the men usually because they're attracted more to the body, women are not like that, thanks God. But to get a man like this, I can't afford it even to marry, getting intrigued, getting stimulated. It's committing a huge sin. Do not get involved with it. I'm elder of God, I tell you, God knows very well about your intention. Every time they get attracted sexually and you're planned for it, and you're of course not going to give it to them, you are committing sin something unforgivable, worse than adultery, okay? So, but the reality is that a sexuality is not like drinking. Drinking or smoking is something that you're adding to the work of nature and God. Sex is made by God. The organ is made by God. People do not get addicted to it in that way, you know. It's a, you know, social addiction, mostly. It's not substance addiction. It's not so much bad, the very act of it, that the consequences of it is. You can commit an uh, act of sex and adultery without knowing that this man and woman, they, they might ruin their marriage because of it. Or you could say that it was very bad, you just had the final act on it and killed it. The children, they may lose their mom and dad. There is a, so much can come out of the consequence of the act of sex that this is why God has so much stressed on it. Because it can cause a lot of damage to the spirit. You know, food and you know, sleeping is not like this. Sex can damage the life of a lot of people. But if nobody gets harmed completely, very hard to say that, you have to investigate it, to completely adult, who have no connections, to know where they're committing sex. But all this is as simple as they have to pay a fine. It's like a social uh, mistake, basically. Just go pay fine. If you honestly couldn't marry or whatever circumstances you fell into, it's not a big thing, so you can come back at it very easily. But all this is, and uh, Kitab Agdas, or complimentary on a tablet called Questions and Answers, he say that if you marry a woman with a condition of virginity, and you found out on the night of the intercourse, marriage, you found out that she's not virgin. He says, okay, if it was conditioned to that, that marriage could be cancelled, revoked. However, he says, if you forgive, God will recompense you so much. See, God wants us to forget these things if we can. You know, the great things about it. Try to ignore it. Try not to pay attention to it. Cover it up. You know, don't make it so blameworthy. That's what Baal says. And I'm going to answer other questions, because a lot of people have asked me that in the future. Okay, in a Baha'i government, in a Baha'i society, would there be prostitution? Can that be a part of the system of the Baha'i faith? Yes, it is. How would that work is like this. About the rules that Baha'u'llah has brought for us, there's one golden clause. Beautiful. What a master he is. He says of a doctor, professional doctor, if he decides that you have to take the morphine, you have to drink, or you have to do any damn things, quite honestly, he is preferred over my general ruling. Only for that particular person. The same future, 
because in the Baha'i faith, marriage is not uh, obligatory. It's not uh, something that uh, you have to. It is recommended profoundly, but at the same time, it's not an obligation. It's not compul compulsory. Somebody is born with a completely deformity, his face, or he has an accident. People are superficial, they look at him and they say, oh, he's on an evil face, a scary face. But he's a young man, maybe 25. He's everywhere else, works. Doctor looks at him and he says that this man is depressed because of the lack of sex. And um, he can't, he has to have it. In that case, that man could have a partial marriage let's say call it, for the time the doctor allows it, or whatever doctor says about that particular person, he could have sex. And there are women that, for whatever reason, they like to do this. They have to be known who they are. We can't just erratically you know, go there and say, okay, I'm going to do it now, decide it, no. They have to be completely tested, qualified, that they are allowed to do this. Upon the receipt of the doctor's recommendation, those women can have a union with this particular individuals, or men in that case, doesn't matter, more men or women. Such reunion, by the order of doctor, happens. So should not call that prostitute and should not call that adultery. It's the order of the doctor for a temporary situation to get fixed. Both parties are not committing adultery and nobody is a prostitute. It's a service that has to be the part of a society. In that case, as long as the doctor orders and then this doctor is a special doctor we don't have one right now uh, none of the psychologists of the West any one of them I'm saying zilch zero zip none of them I believe they're all going wrong completely they're dealing with man as if he's an animal I haven't seen anyone yet but I'm sure there are some I haven't seen and those who are probably are not even qualified as a doctor are not recognized. Psychology of the West is the lamest, is responsible for a lot of problems actually. That's happening with the people. It's a very lame, handicapped, uh, partial uh, knowledge. Very, very bad. So, in that case, in future, such things can happen, yes. And finally, I'm going to be talking about masturbation because it's a question I've been asked. Um, there is nothing in the Baha'i Fit about this, but Baha'i Fit is based on the science and the logic. Logically, Baha'u'llah says he recognized that man at age 15, 16, he has to be able, society has to be able to recognize him, set a setup has to change that he can actually go marry and have jobs. We're wasting our time too much by our losses. By the time we're 30, our children have to be 15, 16. You know, we have freedom as fast as possible. Stop wasting our time in this schooling and this and that. But that is the case right now. There are a lot of people past 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, ooh, 25, still they can afford to marry. What do they do? Better than going to the prostitution, which is no serious, they do it on their own. <laughs> Every time you do it on your own without the uh, recommendations and the uh, order of the doctor, you are committing the sin. Don't make mistakes. There is a negative point in it for you. <laughs> but it's not as big as that if you get engaged in teaching and doing other good acts, it will remove it. But in Baha'i Faith, there's not a single wrong thing that anybody can do, anyone, I mean, anyone except Bob, Baha'u'llah, Abdul Baha, Shah, we have ended. Nobody else is immune. At any point, they do the smallest mistakes. Just displacing a leaf from somewhere to another. There's a point, there's a negative point, all the time. But they're not that big. Or, 
there are a lot of other good things that we could do to replace them. So every time you get involved in prostitution, I have to say that. Uh, it's not as big as jealousy, it's not as big as arrogance. You had to, you masked, I don't know, whatever your circumstances, you were the judge of it. But you have a negative point, brother. There's no way out. Same thing if you get involved in masturbation, it's the same thing. You have negative point because you're allowing adulterous thought to come to your mind. Okay? But yet, it is better than prostitution because there's no other choice. I've talking to one of the most pious Baha'i in India. He was telling me that uh, he can't help it. He gets up in the morning and he has these crazy dreams that just has nothing to do with the faith or everything else, sexual dreams. And then he uh, wet himself. He says, what do I do? I told him, just go masturbate, to be honest with you. Because then you don't see these crazy dreams. And you don't wet your pants. Can't you marry? He says, I have no money. So poor student, you know, getting money from Iran. What could he do? But at the end of the day, if you do too much of it, you get too much in the cyberborg. You become too much into the imaginations. This imagination is becomes too much, it might affect your daily work. Then you live a different life. You must refrain yourself, abstain yourself from doing it. But if you had to, then do it. So the limit is zero. But sometimes you have to give in some negative point, you know, in order to get some bigger points. So. If 24 hours of the time your eyes looks at any woman or any man for that matter and you're getting excited, you have to do something about it. Best is marriage. You can't and then, you know, get engaged into uh, self-satisfaction acts. If not, you know, get into prostitution, which is very, very dangerous anyways. Seriously dangerous. All right. Uh, I didn't like my talk tonight. But I have to cover everything. This was an alternative sexuality rather than what God wants, temporary measures, whatever. But to have to speak about it, to finish up the first chapter of the seven oncoming chapters. Next, tomorrow night, I'm going to give an introduction to parenting and uh, to connection to your actual parents and your children.